Morning caterpillars. So at the start of every single day on Class Dojo on Class Story, our story of the week is going to be uploaded, me reading it, okay? And this week we're doing Kipper's Snowy Day, okay? And I have to find the story because there's lots of stories in this book, so hopefully we can read all of them. But the one that we're doing this week is Kipper's Snowy Day. And remember, this is our front cover. This is our back cover and this is our spine. Fabulous. And our author, so the person who writes the story, is Mick Inkpen. Mick Inkpen. Okay, and we've got Kipper's Snowy Day. It was a new morning and it was snowing. <gasps> Huge cotton wool snowflakes were tumbling past Kipper's window. <gasps> Yes, said Kipper, jumping out of his basket. Yes, yes. He grabbed his scarf and wound it three times round his head. Yes, yes, yes. Kipper was very positive about the snow. And that there he is putting on his scarf and there's all the snow falling down at the window. Kipper rushed outside. The snow lay deep and smooth and new, like an empty page waiting to be scribbled on. He made a paw print and then another. And then with a whoop, he went charging round and round, crisscrossing this way and that until the garden was full of his tracks. There we go, we can see all of his footprints in the snow. Kipper stopped to catch his breath, letting the swirling snowflakes melt on his tongue. Then he fell backwards into the snow and lay there panting. When he stood up, he found that he had made a perfect kipper-shaped hole. He tried again, then he tried a different shape and another. I bet Tiger hasn't thought of this, he said, and ran off to find his best friend. And look, there we go. There's kipper's body prints in the snow. You might have made snow angels in the snow when it snowed last week. Kipper found Tiger at the top of Big Hill. He was wrapped up in a fat bundle of silly woolly clothes. Kipper plopped a friendly snowball on top of his head. <gasps> but there's a snowball. Hello, said Tiger. Tiger pointed up at the sky. A watery sun was seeping through the grey clouds. It won't last, he said. It'll all be gone by tomorrow. There's a warm wind coming. Tiger was like that. He knew things. But this was not at all what Kipper wanted to hear. So he started throwing snowballs at his friend. Tiger was very easy to hit because the silly woolly clothes were wrapped so tightly around him that he could hardly move. And his own snowballs stuck like little pom-poms to the silly woolly gloves. Look at my new game, said Kipper, falling backwards into the snow. You get up very carefully, and there you are. And there he was, or at least the shape of him. Tiger stretched out his arms and fell backwards with a soft, woolly crump. But when he tried to get up, he could not. He was too round. He just lay there, waving his arms and legs like a beetle on its back. Tiger heaved himself over onto his tummy, but he rolled too far and found himself on his back again. He tried again. The same thing happened. Snow began to stick in thick lumps to the silly woolly clothes. Crossly, he heaved himself over once more. This time, he rolled over twice, three times, four times, slowly at first, and then a little faster, and then a lot faster, and then very fast indeed, he rolled down the hill. And as he went, the silly woolly clothes picked up more and more snow, so that by the time he reached the bottom, he had changed from a small dog into a giant snowball. The giant snowball fell to pieces. Kipper charged down the hill. Are you all right, Tiger? He panted. Tiger pulled off his silly woolly hat. A big grin spread across his face. Again, he said. So that is what they did all day long, taking turns to wear the silly woolly clothes. And by the time the sun began to dip towards the hill, making their shadows long and skinny, they had rolled enough snow to the bottom to build a giant snow dog. They watched their shadows lengthen and fade. 
It'll all be gone tomorrow, said Tiger. There's a warm wind coming. But for once, Tiger was wrong. The warm wind stayed away. And that night, another snowstorm smoothed out all of Kipper's paw prints, making the garden like a clean, white, empty page once more. And the snow dog stood at the bottom of the big hill, wearing Tiger's silly, woolly clothes. For almost three whole weeks, what's happened to our snowman? Our snow dog? What's happened? He has melted. He's melted because it's got warm and it's turned back into water. And that is the end of our story. That is the end of Kipper's snowy day. Okay, and that is the end of story time. If you want to watch the story again, you can. Um, for project in a little bit, you will be able to watch a video of Kipper's snowy day and you'll be able to have a think about what snow feels like, what you did in the snow last week because it snowed last week, didn't it? And it was very exciting. Okay, so have a lovely day, Caterpillars. And I shall see you in a bit. Stay safe. Bye.